Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Hi, good afternoon, Professor. Good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, I'm, I'm having some stuff. I don't know if you can hear, but I'm having a lot of static uh, coming from your end. I, I'm not saying the problem is at your end. I think it is my audio. Uh, as you can see, uh, yeah, yeah, that, it's, it's, it's coming from my end. So I will need to, uh, probably I will need to uh, uh, restart Either you know, just restart the browser or restart the computer. But if, uh, I will first try restarting the browser. Because if it doesn't fix the problem, then I will need to uh, restart the computer. Um, and uh, so basically, you know, uh, if you cannot hear me well, then uh, the same thing is also happening uh, at my end. I can tell you. There's a lot of static. So I'm going to try to uh, restart the uh, browser. And if it doesn't fix the problem, then I will need to restart the computer. Uh, so it's going to take a little while. Let me, um, OK. Before, while I'm uh, doing, while I'm going to uh, the problem, there's a lot of static, yeah. Let me first share my screen and. Uh, and you need to also increase the volume of your microphone because um, my microphone is like always at like 50% level. The speaker is at 50% level. But if your microphone is at a um, at low level, I cannot hear you well either. So um, but what I wanted to point out is that uh, before I came to before I came to the uh, collaborative session, I looked my uh, today's forum, right? So if you, I see like, you know, um, 10 people here, I see 10 people in the collaborate, but I see only like uh, seven people in the uh, discussion board. So let me, uh, please do, do the uh, attendance report, right? Uh, the first order of business um, you gotta go to, you gotta uh, report attendance. That's the first order of business, because without that, without your attendance report, there is no physical proof of your attendance. So you will be losing attendance point. Okay. So everyone, please, you know. Um, I'll have to fix the Hmm. Okay, I, it looks like you know. I uh, I will. Uh, I just restarted the computer, but uh, I think the static problem isn't uh, hasn't gone away. So uh, this means I will have to uh, re. 
restart the uh, computer. So uh, I'll be back. Okay. Okay. No problem. All right. See you soon.
All right, I'm back. Let's see if you can hear me better. Do you hear me? Can you hear yeah. me better? Yeah, it's better. Yes, it's better. Okay. Yeah. I, I also need you to uh, adjust your uh, uh, microphone volume so I can hear you better. All right. I want you to uh, 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 increase your microphone volume. Okay. Now, good. So, um, um, so last thing, the last thing I was talking about was um, uh, establishing your digital, a physical record of attendance. So your digital footprint, okay, which is your attendance report in the uh, in uh, the today's discussion board, right? So since I'm, you must be able to, uh, must be seeing what I'm looking at, right? Why is it degree, a uh, blackboard, right? Blackboard, so. All right, and today's forum. There are 11 people, actually 11 people that have signed in to today's forum. And then, uh, yeah, that's correct. And, and there are 11 people in the uh, collaborate session too, as well. So that's, okay, everyone is signed in, so. Uh, <clears throat> All right. Um, so in our last class, um, I believe we were talking about um, uh, we were talking about the nominal interest rate and real interest rate, right? Um, and because uh, the in a broader context, if you think about it, in a, a broader context, um, interest rate is the the most basic uh, return on your investment, right? It's the most basic return on investment. And you might, as I said, uh, you may not perceive that, uh, you know, um, uh, if you put your money in the bank, I mean, you earn interest, you will earn interest, you know, when you put your money in the bank. Um, Although the uh, bank interest rate is, you know, very uh, mediocre these days, you know, it's not even 0.1%. Um, but, you know, back in 1980s, you know, um, around, you know, um, uh, 81 through 85, right? At the height of, uh, and that was the uh, recession, you know, very deep recession, you know. But during this, during these years, the uh, interest rate was even as high as 15%, right? So then, you know, um, that is, you know, um, uh, you might say, you know, uh, how can it be, you know? Uh, but that was the, um, and you said that was, that was, you know, a recession. Yes, um, it was recession because the interest rate was that high. It was a... Uh, uh, so basically, interest rate, um, and then why would they why would they raise interest rate and uh, uh, bring the uh, recession to the economy? Um, actually, um, in the late seventies, the late seventies was the uh, period of uh, very high inflation, but it was also called stagflation because the economy was stagnating. And at the same time, uh, there was huge inflation. And the only way to fight the huge, huge inflation is basically, you know, uh, when the economy is overheated. Uh, and then usually in, when the economy is heated, that means there is a lot of, you know, uh, a demand, right? If there's a lot of demand, then uh, the economy um, 
the supply side, uh, the supply side of the uh, economy will also expand because they don't, uh, they want to uh, uh, capture this increased demand, the strong demand, but the supply side couldn't grow. The supply side couldn't grow. Why? Because the um, uh, input input cost was too high uh, at the time. So uh, the, the economy couldn't physically grow, but the demand was high. So um, there was a, a, a very high demand uh, pull inflation as well as you know a cost push inflation. And the only way to uh, subdue this um, strong inflation was by cooling off the economy. And to cool off the economy, they had to raise it, uh, lower the demand. They had to weaken the demand. Uh, they had to uh, cut off. Uh, how, how did they uh, cut off the, um, how did they weaken the economy? Uh, how did they weaken the uh, uh, demand? By cutting off the money supply. How do they, uh, uh, not cutting off, but reducing the money supply. So how do they reduce the money supply? By raising interest rate, okay? So um, in the early 80s, um, interest rate was artificially raised to a very high level, uh, like 15%. And then you may you may wonder. Um, uh, so, did uh, wasn't this a wonderful time for the savers? Yes, I mean from the savers' perspective, putting your money in the bank and you earn like fifteen percent interest. This is a wonderful. This is a great time. But economy wide, this isn't a great time. This is a recession, economy-wide. Um, if this was, you know, a bad time, especially from the uh, uh, borrower's perspective, think about it. When interest rate is so high, interest rate is high, uh, it's not conducive to borrowing, isn't it right? I mean, when interest rate is like 15%, 20%, uh, is it? Are you likely to borrow? Hmm. This is not just a re rhetorical question I'm asking you. <laughs> Will you increase no, borrowing? Not. You wouldn't borrow. No, of course not. You know, it's no. a lot of, it's a huge burden, yes. Uh, you wouldn't, no, you wouldn't, because it's a huge burden, right? It's a huge burden, right? Uh, if you borrow, you know, $10,000, and if the interest rate is 10%, that means annually you will have to pay, you know, uh, <laughs> Uh, $1,000, right? And it's a huge yeah. burden. I mean, if you, you borrow, so uh, no matter what, I mean, $1 million, then, you know, uh, your, you have, your interest is, you know, $100,000 a year. Uh, that's, that discourages borrowing. That clearly discourages borrowing. So throughout the uh, 1980s, and you know, early 1980s, uh, it was a, a period of recession, and the uh, interest rate was very high. But you know, the, the recession was uh, artificially induced, uh, artificially in, uh, meaning you know, Federal Reserve raised the interest rate to cool off the economy. So then you know, um, the economy cooled off. Inflation was gone. Inflation was gone, and then they could you know, um, as the inflation uh went away uh the economy could uh be put back on the normal um uh, now the, the recession doesn't last forever it will bottom out eventually right and of course you know uh, uh left left alone to itself i mean without any uh without any uh intervention by the central bank the economy can uh still correct itself but it takes a lot of time so that's why the uh, intervention by the Federal Reserve. And also at the height of the uh, uh, inflation, uh, if you leave the economy to itself, it will correct itself, but it's gonna take a lot of time. It's, a, uh, it's like a, uh, 
uh, economy was always likened to a uh, uh, macro economy, was always uh, traditionally likened to a, uh, a large steam ship, like, you know, Titanic. And how, why did Titanic sink? Because it, dis, it spotted, it discovered a uh, iceberg, uh, but too late. I mean, um, uh, you cannot uh, change the course of a large ship uh, instantaneously. You have to, uh, uh, if you see an iceberg, you know, you should spot it like, you know, uh, uh, miles and miles and miles away. And then you can, you know, uh, steer the ship away from the uh, uh, the iceberg. And it's, uh, so uh, the trajectory of the ship is a, uh, 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 a curve, uh, not a sharp curve, you know, it's a, very um, smooth curve. So you will need to give yourself a lot of time uh, to to avoid uh, to avoid you know crashing into the iceberg, right? Um, so you have to steer the ship you know slowly and you know from far away. But it's just like that. The macro economy will take time. Uh, it, it will correct itself eventually. I mean, recession will bottom out eventually. The economy will bottom out, out of the recession. The economy will also turn around, uh, make a turnaround at the height of the inflation, but it takes a lot of time, right? It takes a lot of time. Uh, and if it takes a lot of time, in the meantime, uh, the people will suffer, right? There's no way. Um, so um, uh, they will suffer, you know, unemployment. You know, they will suffer, you know, uh, uh, a lot uh, in the recession. They will suffer unemployment. You know, in recession, uh, in uh, at inflation, at the height of inflation, they will suffer loss of their purchasing power. Uh, and you know, um, uh, stagnating. Uh, stagnating growth of the uh, uh, economy. So that's why the uh, policy, uh, the Federal Reserve's you know, um, intervention is needed, right? Policy intervention is necessary to quicken that process. So, um, yeah, when um, by, you know, bring the uh, economy into recession, then uh, uh, the economy cooled off, then uh, also uh, wages went down. Think about it. During the inflation, uh, everything gets expensive. Everything goes up, like, you know, wages, the price of the uh, raw materials, you know, uh, price of the, uh, the finished goods, uh, cost of, you know, uh, uh, cost of, you know, uh, uh, utility. For example, um, I said, in the late 80s, the uh, recession, uh, the inflation was caused by uh, uh, input price. Uh, the shock in the uh, input cost. And what does that mean? Um, in the late uh, in the late 70s, uh, mid mid 70s to late 80s, you know, uh, there were like three. Middle Eastern wars, Middle East, you know, there were war, three wars between, you know, uh, Israel and its Arab uh, neighbors. Um, and um, through these three wars, you know, obviously, you know, um, uh, uh, they will strike, they will strike the, uh, the, um, the oil fields, right? Israel, uh, the you know uh, jet uh, the fighters the jet fighters you know um, the air force will strike the oil uh, field oil fields of the uh, uh, the uh, uh, Egypt or you know um, uh, the the countries they they go uh, they are at war with um, because you know that's their main you know uh, industry. They will try to uh, uh, shut down the industry, 
right? So the you know airstrike that will be on eight airstrike, and um, uh, although um, Israel could you know hit all all of the air, you know um, oil fields, but at least you know some oil fields get you know hit, and then the production of oil goes down. Uh, so and they are most most of the uh, uh, Middle East uh, produces oil. Uh, not every country, but most you know rich. Uh, uh, Arab world is, you know, most of the rich Arab world produces oil. Uh, poor Arab countries don't have any oil. That's what makes the uh, distinction, you know. Uh, Saudi Arabia, um, uh, Iraq, they all produce oil. Uh, uh, Jordan, I don't know if Jordan, uh, uh, but some countries don't, you know, have any oil. Um, so the um, Price of oil. Kuwait. Kuwait produces oil, of course, you know, definitely. Uh, the price of oil. These are OPEC countries, and OPEC. If OPEC decides, if OPEC decides to raise the uh, uh, price, then what they what they do first? They they cut down on oil production, right? <laughs> OPEC is a cartel, international cartel, and because it's an international cartel, it's outside any jurisdiction of any country. Nobody can enforce anything, um, and uh, uh, but you know, uh, uh, oil production went down because of you know strike air strike you know uh, on the oil fields, and then so in the late seventies the there was oil crisis. There were three oil crises. You know, I remember you know because I was a you know teenager in the seventies and cars were lined up, gas stations were all you know. Uh, and the similar thing happened when I, I believe the similar thing happened uh, also in uh, I saw the uh, the you know the same picture again because uh, wasn't it um, it wasn't that it was after financial crisis or something. I saw people also line up in gas stations again. You know, that was like 2000 something. All <laughs> uh, um, prices, temporarily it went up and. Uh, 2008, you mean? Hmm? In 2008? Uh, no, after 2008. I, I believe that was after the financial crisis. So it was clearly after 2008. I don't know what uh -huh. triggered that uh, oil shock again, but you know, uh, uh, oil prices went up like you know crazy, and uh, ah, yeah, you know, I saw them, you know, lining up. I saw people lining up in the gas station. Mm. So that wasn't that long, but you know, 1970s, you know. Uh, uh, Really, cars were really lining up, and the oil, uh, the gas was rationed. It was a gas, you know, rationing of gas. Um, that happened like three times in the 1970s. So, uh, and that that was called, you know, uh, uh, supply. That caused the supply shock. Uh, what is supply shock on the supply so side because of the uh, shock? In the supply side, and shock is you know uh, because of the uh, high oil price, right? Everything had to be expensive. Everything was expensive. Now you might wonder if oil price goes up, uh, it 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 makes sense. It's understandable that the uh, uh, gas price goes up and the heating, you know, energy, you know, uh, in winter winter time, you know. Uh, um, heating home, you know, uh, if you're heating home with oil, um, uh, the heating and, you know, uh, uh, transportation, you know, because of, you know, gas, that may go up, but why would everything else go up? Um, look, uh, oil is the lifeblood, blood of, you know, uh, every industry. Because why? If you think about it, all industries depend on electricity, right? The factories run on electricity. All the plants run on electricity, 
right? And then the electricity is generated by power plants, and the power plants back in the uh, 70s were mostly oil burning or coal burning power plants. And even now, even to the even to this day, in the US or everywhere, I mean, Europe, Europe has less dependency on power, uh, fossil fuel, but US still has a lot of, you know, dependency on uh, fossil fuel, right? Power plants are mostly, you know, coal burning or oil burning. And it's mostly oil burning rather than coal burning because coal is cheaper, but uh, Coal is cheaper, but then, you know, it's uh, obviously um, dirtier. It pollutes more. Um, and although you might say, uh, uh, don't we have like, you know, uh, windmills and, you know, solar power and geothermal and tidal power? Those are very minimal still. On an industrial scale, uh, they take up uh, still... Uh, minor fraction of minor portion of the uh, entire power supply. The majority of the power supply comes from, you know, although they have hydropower plants, you know, uh, uh, windmills and, you know, uh, 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 solar power, they are very limited. Okay, still even to this date, uh, a lot of it depends on a lot of, you know, so the industry depends on uh, electricity. And once the oil price went up, the utility bill went up too, right? Um, so all the uh, industries, uh, their cost went up, right? Because to to produce their to produce their goods, they had to use you know uh, electric to uh, electricity to run their machines, uh, to run their plant and equipment. But you know, uh, uh, their uh, electricity cost was more expensive, way more expensive. And then what happens, you know, uh, their price has to go up because their production cost. And so electricity is a big part of their input cost and the input cost goes up. So everything, uh, the price goes up, right? The price had to go up. And um, together with that, so uh, price of everything went up wages go up too. wages right when you know food shelter food clothing shelter transportation everything goes up wages must go up too right so when wages go up uh input cost goes up raw material cost goes up um prices to go up but the price cannot go up um uh, just you know uh uh indefinitely because if price uh as long as you are Think about it. You're not a monopoly. There are there is a competition in the industry. There are many competitors. If there are many competitors in your industry, uh, if you raise your prices above the uh, average of your industry, then you lose your customers. You lose business. So you will have to uh, meet uh, as long as the uh, average of the uh, average price of the industry uh, doesn't go up as fast and uh, you cannot just you know, hike up your price. Even if you are, even if you are a monopoly, right? There's no competition. Then you think you can raise your price, you know, uh, any way you want, to any level you want. No. If you raise your price, then of course you're the, you know, you will lose. You will lose, you know, demand. You will lose, you know, customers. You will lose, you know. Um, so even if you are a uh, the demand goes down, even if you're a monopoly, if you, you cannot raise, you know, uh, price um, to any level. But uh, moreover, when your industry is highly competitive, you cannot do that. So you, there is a, a limitation as to how much the uh, price you raise, but um, there's a squeeze, then there's a squeeze, right? Your, uh, you, you have to pay higher wages. Uh, raw material cost is higher, electricity is higher, so your profit margin goes down. So then what do you do? They, uh, the manufacturers cut down on production. 
because the more you produce, the less profit you make. So what do you do? You cut down on production and you downsize, right? Down, so downsizing means uh, inevitably not only the downsizing of your production capacity, uh, production facilities, plant and equipment, but also people, your workers. You will downsize the workers. There will be a lot of layoffs, right? Does that make sense? Now, so that's the recession. So uh, this recession in the early 80s was, you know, caused uh, uh, caused by, uh, it's called cost push, caused by inflation, and it's called cost push inflation, cost push, right? Because high cost of the input, right? Input, uh, high cost of input uh, causes the inflation. It was called, so it was the supply side shock, shock to the supply side, right? Uh, shock, you know, because there was a, a, a hike in the uh, input cost, that was a shock to the uh, suppliers, the manufacturers, right? So, um, uh, so it, 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 the economy bottomed out, you know, uh, by, by, you know, artificially inducing recession to cool off the economy. So then think about it. Uh, when, when everyone loses jobs, you know, think about it. During the recession, people lose jobs, right? Uh, and if people lose jobs, you know, then uh, we all understand. Uh, if, you're, if you are one of the lucky people that still uh, that are still holding on to the job, right? This is not the best time to ask for a pay raise, isn't it right? You cannot ask for a pay raise when uh, uh, everyone else is losing job. And you would also be losing your job if you ask for a pay raise, don't you think? Right? If you ask for a pay raise, you lose your job because there are tons of people, thousands of people who will be happy to work in your position, right? For less of for less pay. So this is definitely not a good time to ask for a pay raise. But moreover, this is the time that you should be happy with to take the uh, pay cut, isn't it? Right? Even if the uh, even if your boss uh, cuts your pay, yeah. right? You should say, you know, just better than zero. thank you for not firing me. Thank you for not firing me. Thank you for keeping me on the payroll. I'll do anything. Yeah. Just leave me on the payroll, right? <laughs> I'll be happy to take the pay cut, right? So then what happens? So there was a natural, there was a natural downward pressure. There was a natural downward pressure on, uh, uh, on wages, right? And it also happens with the uh, uh, everything else. Um, the the uh, raw material cost will also go down because you know all the raw material uh, you know suppliers will also still be happy to uh, 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 to retain you as uh, a customer, right? And as long as your company is ordering. Uh, uh, as long as your company keeps ordering from that supplier, uh, that supplier will uh, still continue. So they will be happy. They uh, even at a lower lower price, they will uh, sell the uh, raw materials to you, to your company, right? So this is how the economy bottoms out. Because when everything, when the the input cost goes down, right? Wage goes down, raw material cost goes down, then there is more room, there is more room for profit margin, right? Without lowering the price of your product, uh, there is more room. Then that's an incentive. That's an incentive for the uh, manufacturer to uh, uh, increase production. So as they increase the production, then uh, more raw materials will be hired and more workers will be hired and uh, the economy, um, crawls out of the uh, economy crawls out of the recession that way okay and this is uh the natural cycle this is the part of natural business cycle 
This is part of natural business cycle. But as I said, if left to itself, if the economy is left to itself, uh, this doesn't. Ha this happens very, very slowly. This happens very slowly. And that's why the uh, uh, Federal Reserve, the central bank, steps in, and you know, uh, lowers the interest rate, or you know, uh, uh, to quicken this process, right? So um, uh, it was a long story, but uh, that was what happened in the 1980s, early 1980s, and you know, the first half of 1980s, and uh, and it worked, right? It worked. And then uh, that, that was a time when, you know, uh, when the interest rate was as high as 15%. But now, you understand why the interest rate is so low these days? Because if interest rate is ha uh, high, uh, and the interest rate was basically uh, lowered um, in like 2008 uh, from... Uh, in 2008, uh, this was, you know, the, the beginning of the financial crisis. And the financial crisis started in September of 2007 with the subprime mortgage crisis. Uh, but for that to turn into full-blown crisis, then it took about, like, within six months period, it, it was full-blown. It, it developed into a full-blown financial crisis. So then think, look, look at this. From the 5.25%, uh, it just took one year to drop to 0.25%, uh, 0.25. Uh, so 5%, you know, uh, drop in uh, the Fed funds rate is a drastic move. And I believe I, I, I mentioned this before. Uh, if Fed changes interest rate, they don't do it drastically like this. It's only like by... 0.25% every quarter. So they raise it gradually and drops it gradually by 0.25% per qu a quarter. So over a year, it would be at most, you know, uh, 1%, right? Or at most 2%. And they don't do this, you know, uh, uh, they don't drop the, the interest rate by 5% over a year. I mean, uh, and not even over five years, because uh, they don't, if they drop it, uh, they want to see the drastic impact. So, I mean, if they drop it by 1% each year, and if it takes five years, that's too long, right? Um, so the, the, the point is, yeah, so they had to uh, lower the interest rate to 0.5%. To five, it's actually between zero and zero point two five. The effective rate is um, so that it would uh, encourage borrowing, right? So that the uh, uh, businesses borrow, businesses will borrow more uh, for you know their expansion. Actually, it took a very long time. It took almost a decade, right? It took almost a, uh, a decade for the economy to recover from the uh, from the recession caused by financial crisis. But think about it: there was no incentive to borrow in um, in 2009, right? Why? Companies will only expand if the economy is booming, don't you think? Yeah, they, they didn't have the means yeah. to expand. They just needed to conserve what they had. Yeah, yeah. Think about yeah. it. Um, yeah. They will, if the economy is, you know, in recession, still in recession, uh, there isn't that much demand. Uh, demand won't grow that much. And when demand is very weak, uh, it's a stupid idea to, uh, to expand because you will have only uh, excess capacity. And the excess capacity means that you have, uh, you invested, you put money into access to expand, so you have excess capacity. All that investment will just be wasted, right? Because you, in, uh, with the access, uh, with more production capacity, you will produce more. All that, you know, uh, increased production, increased output won't find a consumer, 
right? It, it will remain unsold, right? So there was, you know, uh, uh, investment for expansion of the capacity, and there was, you know, input cost to uh, uh, to produce goods, and all of that co input cost will won't be recovered, and the uh, uh, investment the uh, for expansion it will it won't be recovered. So even though the interest rate is low, even though the interest rate was low, the economy didn't recover quickly because they didn't borrow that much. But that's why it took such a long time to recover. And only by like, you know, 2018, uh, 2016, they started to, uh, like 2000, uh, uh, by the end of 2016, they raised the uh, Fed funds rate to uh, 0.5. And 2017, then they raised it to, uh, by the, uh, uh, gradually, and by 2018, it went up to even 2.5%, right? But then, you know, uh, uh, so they were even talking about um, by 2019, 2000, uh, they were even talking about tapering, okay? And what was tapering? You know, um, uh, tapering means, you know, uh, uh, cutting down, Cutting down on you know uh, uh, money supply, okay. Cutting down on the uh, uh, expansionary monetary policy, right? Uh, look, this was expansionary monetary policy, right? This was a period of expansionary monetary policy, and it was named quantitative easing (QE). Quantitative easing, right? What does that mean? Um, the uh, Federal Reserve is easing up money supply, easing up money supply in a massive quantity, in a large quantity, right? That's what is meant by quantitative easing. This was the period of quantitative easing that you might want. So uh, how, uh, how, how was quantitative easing possible when they were not borrowing? Uh, Eventually, I mean, they started to, uh, in the early days, they didn't borrow that much, right? But the, the companies expanded, they borrowed and expanded eventually uh, as economy uh, crawled out very slowly. So, and that's why, you know, uh, by uh, the end of 2016, it went up to a 0.5%. Uh, and then, you know, then, uh, gradually went up to 2.25, 2.5 in 2008. Um, so the money supply expanded, the money supply expanded during this period, right? Why? Because money supply expanded because interest rate was low, right? Money supply expanded. And then, um, Uh, taper, so they were, there was a lot of talk about taper. Uh, tapering, as I said, means, you know, uh, minimum, uh, gradually, gradually reducing uh, the money supply. So uh, uh, reducing the uh, quantitative easing, right? Because they feared, you know, the economy was, you know, uh, heating up. Um, And the term tape, you know, I, I don't know if everyone uh, understands what taper is. I mean, it, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor, actually. Why? Uh, does um, does anyone ha, has anyone ever seen what taper is? Uh, oops, my. Do you hear me well? Can you hear me well? My connection status is yes. also yes. okay. If you can hear me, yeah. Good, good, then, because you know it's uh, the bar is red, and uh, but at least I don't hear static any static from your end. Uh, does has anyone ever seen an example of a taper? Because when they say taper, it's it it's it's only a metaphor, huh? 
Anybody seen an actual taper? What, what do you know? Uh, what is a taper? Hmm? I don't think you have ever seen a taper yourself. It's a it's a physical thing. Call it. Call it. Your microphone is. What's a taper? Huh? I'm asking. <laughs> what's a taper? Okay, so I'm gonna. So you don't know. Okay, I'm gonna show you. Um, taper is nothing but. Um, okay. Uh, is taper haircut? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, who said that? <laughs> who said oh. that? Keisha, Keisha Anderson. Keisha. Keisha. Yeah. <laughs> I heard uh, Keisha. Okay. Uh, Keisha. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, I'll get, I'll give you zero point two five. Yeah, um, that is. Why do they? But you know, in a haircut, uh, taper means you know getting a narrow, um, getting you know uh, the 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 haircut gets narrow as it goes down, right? Isn't that isn't that what tape? Isn't that what it is? Hmm. Keisha. Yeah, it's a yes. fade. Huh? Yeah, that's. But you know, in styling, they use the hairstyling. They call, use the term taper, but taper is actually um, in a carpentry. In carpentry, uh, where is that? Uh... Oh no! Why is it getting so big? Oh. oh, come on. Oh, the whiteboard is giving me, it's not the whiteboard, my mouse is giving, mouse wheel is giving me a headache. Okay, uh, I'll have to do it uh, one way or the other, you know. Um, <laughs> I'll start a new one. Um, so, oh. so let's say you have a uh, a cylinder like this. Oh, uh, wood cylinder, wood cylinder, and. Uh, and like a pencil, I mean, pencil looks like this. A pencil looks like this at first, but uh, uh, you will have to uh, sharpen the pencil. You know, uh, you put it into the pencil sharpener, and the pencil turns into a. Ah, oh, no. Pencil turns into a shape, something like this, right? Okay, it automatically did that. I wasn't. Um, and then, yeah. what can you say about this? is a This is a triangle, but you know, it's not really. Uh, uh, but think of a cylinder, right? Um, what you see here is, you know, uh, uh, this thing is. Uh, I want to Okay, uh it looks like I cannot What if uh, you like the cave that turns into a tunnel? Hm? Would it be like a cave that turns into a tunnel? So it's Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's the the here. Uh, yeah, yeah. So Basically, you know, at this end, it is, you know, uh, the diameter is wider at this end, right? The diameter is wider at this end, right? But the diameter will get smaller and smaller as you, right? As you move this direction, right? Mo move into this direction. That's called taper. Right, you're t you're tapering, you know, from a, a, a bigger, you know, a diameter 
to a uh, smaller diameter, right? Getting smaller, in other words, you know, uh, diminishing, right? So it's a metaphor, actually, it's a metaphorical expression, right? Um, so when they say taper, now tapering the uh, uh, quantitative easing, that gives you an idea, you know, they want to uh, cut down on money supply. They, they are trying to cut down on money supply. That's what taper means. So um, around 2018, uh, and there was a talk about, you know, uh, taper. Uh, but then uh, 2020, the, uh, uh, and to taper, you know, you will have to raise the interest rate, right? You'll have to raise the interest rate. And then uh, in 2020, you know, the pandemic, uh, COVID-19 hit. So then uh, no more taper, no more talk about taper since the, the interest rate went down again to uh, 0%, right? Uh, but now they are also talking about taper, right? Uh, because inflation is now about 3%, you know, uh, something like 3 to 5%, depending on uh, which, you know, sector of the economy. Uh, and the uh, reset, there was no, uh, there was a brief recession early on, but actually the economy was still uh, buoyed, right? The economy was still buoyed by, you know, this uh, uh, easy money policy. I mean, uh, not only the easy money policy, people were getting, you know, uh, uh, stimulus checks, you know. Um, I think, I believe I talked about this in the last class. So spending didn't go down. Um, so, um, they are even talking about, uh, they are talking about, you know, uh, tapering and this is going to be around, uh, if early it will be in like, you know, uh, 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 around end of this year, uh, even, uh, but you know, otherwise it will be at least by the end of 2022, um, uh, but you know um, that's that's why the interest rate is here. You know uh, why we have such a low interest rate. Another thing is you know let's think about uh, and we talked about the nominal interest rate versus real interest rate in the last class, I believe. Uh, the inflation uh, because the inflation is eating away, eroding the purchasing power. Uh, we had a very in-depth discussion about this, right? How you know, using the uh, Coca-Cola, right? Example, didn't we? Everyone remembers that, right? Don't tell me you don't, because um, at yeah. least, yeah, good. And because if you don't remember, uh, don't just say, huh? Did we? Huh? I don't know. No, I have. You see all the. Uh, live sessions, right? All the uh, collaborate sessions are updated after each class. So go back to a uh, uh, September 13th uh, recording, right? And uh, catch up. And all of these, uh, today's videos are these, but you know, all the uh, past videos that are more than five days old, you can find them on YouTube. Right, I give you my, you know, YouTube play channel. The playlist is, you know, uh, finance, uh, CUNY, BMCC uh, uh, playlist. Where is uh, the original lecture videos are? Here, CUNY B, and the name is CUNY BMC ZFNB 100. You can find all the uh, past videos, even future videos. And also, um, uh, to, uh, this fall, right? Uh, all the lecture videos this fall, yeah. You can find it there. You can find it there. Not only your class, other other sections as well, because you are 1300, right? Uh, but you know there is you know 1100 section 1100 every class section 1400 even section uh, section um, 1101 
So you can peek into because what what I miss uh, in this class, I mean, I cannot reproduce this. I cannot reproduce exactly uh, what I talk, what I uh, said in another class. Uh, uh, you know, I cannot reproduce it verbatim here in this uh, session. So uh, in this class. So if you wonder, you know, sometimes I said something in another class, but you know, I forgot to uh, I forget to uh, uh, say that in this class. So you can, I mean, of course, it will take a lot of time to go over. And uh, uh, you, you guys meet two hours today. I mean, it's one hour, 40 minutes. But, you know, uh, uh, Section 1100 meets only one hour. So it's all, you know, uh, you're at different uh, milestones. You know, you're at different, uh, because you're, you're at different pace. You're at different uh, uh, points, different points. But anyway, um, uh, so now uh, uh, it's already two or four. So I think it's a good time to take a uh, ten, uh, ten minute break because, uh, and besides, you guys owe me fifteen minutes, right? Uh, last class I went on to. Uh, <laughs> You guys only 15 minutes. Um, so let's take a 10 minute break now and uh, reconvene at 2.15. Okay, let's reconvene. I gotta give my throat a little uh, break because you know, my throat is overworked all the time. So let's recon at uh, 2.15, okay? Let me put, okay. All righty, let me put you on hold. Okay.
All right, we're back. We're back. So let's get back to, um, oh, I see only 10 people now. Okay, let me share my screen. So, um, uh, where was I? Yeah, uh, now uh, the um, another another criteria, right? An another way to uh, 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 look at interest rate is how they actually uh, apply. Uh, so interest rate can be uh, uh, classified as simple interest rate versus compound interest rate. So you understand there's a, uh, you know, uh, there's a difference between lending rate and borrowing rate. And there's a difference between nominal interest rate and real interest rate. Uh, there's a difference between simple interest rate and compound interest rate. Um, and <clears throat> compounding is something you already know, right? Okay, now I get it. Now I get it. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh. All right, I'm, uh, Jesus, I'm, uh, I'm trying, trying to uh, adjust. Ugh. So my mouse is working up, acting up. All right, I'll have to uh, settle for that. <clears throat> so, um, um, there are, you know what compounding is already, right? Because we've done, uh, as we, uh, at the beginning, you know, uh, as we, uh, as we discussed and explored geometric average, right, in, in um, uh, and uh, as a, uh, inevitably, I mean, uh, uh, as a corollary, uh, corollary is like a uh, one logic being, you know, um, if a logical statement stands and, you know, there is a, uh, uh, like a parallel, um, logical statement that must be true. But, you know, um, whatever the corollary is, you know, uh, that's not what's important at this point. But um, uh, to talk about to talk about uh, growth rate, geometric average, right? Um, it was necessary to talk about compounding, right? So you remember compounding, right? Don't you? Yes. Yeah, good. So the compounding is um, uh, base, basically like snowballing, right? Interest is also earning interest, right? So um, it snowballs, basically the principal snowballs because the interest is also earning interest and is also earning interest, and which is also earning interest and so on. Um, 
So basically, our um, we know future value at time one will be basically principal plus interest, right? And the um, And the interest can be rewritten as principal cannot be rewritten because principal is a constant. It's already a given number. But interest is basically uh, 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 interest rate. Um, principal times interest times, right? One. What is that one? One year, right? Interest for one year. Isn't that right? But you know, one, we don't write one because, uh, so one drops out because we don't use one, right? We don't write one, we don't have to. Or whether you write uh, one R or two, uh, one R or just R, it's R, one R, right? So we don't have to write one. But then this can be written, you know, uh, this, because this is not the uh, simplest form. When you have common factor, you have to factor out the common factor. So if I factor out the common factor, it's going to be 1 plus R. Right? So everyone is OK with that, right? Everyone follows, right, so far. And we know FV2, future value 2, is FV1, because at the beginning of year two, future value one is already sitting there, and it earns interest uh, again. So if I rewrite FV2, uh, I mean, if I rewrite R, uh, if I rewrite I, interest, it's FV1, plus FV1 times R. Is that right? Everyone is OK to up to this point? Anyone has any questions about that? I'm, Anyone? I'm, a, little I, I'm a little confused. OK. Who's, I, who's a little confused? Me, Khaled. Caleb, okay, Caleb. So what what are you confused about? Um, I I just I I forgot what F V stands for. V V stands for value, future value. Okay. Okay, F V future value one, future value one is future value at the end of year one, and please mm -hmm. you know in uh increase the uh increase your microphone volume because you know uh, um. Uh, okay. I can barely hear you. Please, you know, at least you can. Uh, this is speaker. My speaker is always at fifty percent, so mm. uh, that's. Uh, and you can. Uh, your microphone. I guess you can go to setting and you know uh, the microphone. Uh, you can go to devices and you know probably you can do that. Okay, uh, I'll try to. Or, or from it. here, I mean, from here. I I have a different computer. Okay, all right, but you know, I'll, uh, I'll if try. you have a Mac, you know, Mac would also have like control control panel and from, and okay. if you have, there's a microphone icon somewhere in the uh, task bar. Hmm. All right, so future value at the end of year two. Uh, is basically at the beginning of year two, you have future value one already sitting there, and then you earn interest for one year. So I can rewrite interest as future value one times R, right? So, I mean, think about it. This isn't that difficult. I mean, if the, um, 
if your principal uh, Okay, just, you know, using a very uh, simple number, right? Uh, if your principal is 10K, and if your interest rate is 10%, right? We already know, we all know future value one will be eleven K because uh because ten percent, ten percent of you know, ten percent of uh ten percent of ten K is one K. So 10k there, 1k, right? Which is you no, know, uh, which is you know, 11k, right? Also, uh, simply you know, uh, you can do it like by this, you know, 10k times 1.1, right? And then, and just the same logic, future value two will be you know. Uh, and at the beginning of year two, you have uh, future value one already sitting there, and it's gonna earn 10% interest and 10% um, of future value one. So this is, you know, uh, 11K. And this is 10% of uh, 11K. So 11K times 10%. So this is going to be 1.1K, right? But, you know, let's not use numbers for now because, you know, numbers can come later. But for some people who uh, cannot follow, who cannot follow algebra, you know, uh, I have to... Uh, no, too much. It gets it gets more it's more time taking it's more time taking for people uh, who don't even have the uh, uh, you know uh, the basic algebra um, but that's why that's why you know um, uh, uh, all my lectures are pre-recorded and you can replay always play replay played over and over again until you follow until you can make sense of it right in an uh in a face-to-face -face class once the class is over it's gone everything is gone right you have to you have to uh you know um you have to take a note and just going over the note you will have, um, um, if you still have, if that is not enough, if, if you still have questions, there is no, uh, there's no way you can backtrack it, right? You have to see me during my office hour. That's the only thing. But my office hour is very thin uh, and it may not be con conveniently meeting your, you know, uh, uh, you may not, conveniently uh, meet me in my uh, during my office hours but um, in an online class all my lectures are there it's posted in uh, on YouTube and you know on course materials folder so you can play it over and over again until you get it so uh, basically think about it it's the same logic we must factor out the common factor If you factor out the common factor, FV1, right, times 1 plus R. 
right? But what is FV1? What is FV1? Can anybody tell me the definition of mathematical definition of FV1? Hmm? I don't don't tell uh, me future it's future value. Huh? No, no, no. Don't tell me it's future value at the end of year one. I, I didn't, uh, I told you already. Is it 11,000? Okay, don't give me the number. You don't need to give me the number. Said, I said mathematical definition. I asked for mathematical uh, definition of FV1. Don't give me a verbal definition or number. Give me the uh, mathematical definition of FV1. What is FV1? We already defined FV1, didn't we? Wait, is it uh, is 10K plus? No, 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 no. That's not the mathematical definition. I, I said oh, no. no, no numbers, no words. No words, no numbers, but mathematical definition. What's the mathematical definition? Uh, person value plus interest. Okay. Uh, who was that? Go on, go on. Uh, exactly, and that equals to present value plus present value. Well, don't, don't, don't say present value, just say P. Okay? Yeah, P. Don't give words. P. P plus, uh -huh. plus interest. Yes, plus. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. F1 is P plus interest. Right? And also if yes. And also equals to P plus P times R. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the conclusion was what? Conclusion was what? What was the conclusion? Oh the P uh times uh one plus R. Yes, that is F V one. That's the definition of F V one. Isn't that right? That's the def that's what, how we define that we want. Isn't it right? So we can we can replace we can replace every one by its own with its own definition. And then so every one this is every one times then one plus R. Right? But then this is not the uh, we know we can do better. What is this? Do we write it like this? When when we have P times one plus R times one plus R, do we leave it like this? Hmm? We can simplify. Huh? Say that again. Who who's talking? Yeah, I think you're Aura. Aura. And who who gave me who gave me the definition of F E one first? Who gave me the definition of FV1? The mathematical definition? Yeah, yeah. Who gave me the mathematical definition of FV1? I only, yes, look, I only handle, I only handle mathematical definition. I don't like, I don't handle, we don't, we don't treat anything other than mathematical definition in this class. You understand? Huh? We don't, we don't work with words. We don't work with numbers. We work with the uh, math. We work with the algebra. So, yeah, who gave me the mathematical definition of FE1? Who oh, was yes, it? Yes, I did. Aura, and who, A U R A. Aura, okay. Aura, so Aura, I'll give you 0 0.25 for that. And uh, Aura, you are also trying to, uh, uh, you are also trying to say something, right? Yes, I said that we can simplify. Yes. Yeah, you must simplify. Speak, please speak up. Please speak up a little louder. Oh, how sorry. do you simplify that? How do you simplify that? Uh, we can multiply or put it as for um, elevated by the by two. Uh, I can't quite hear you, but you know, I don't think you said it right. Do you hear me right now? Yeah, but barely. I can hear you, but I can hear you barely. You know, it's uh, very dim. Uh, so it looks like 
there was a background noise. Uh, yes, but also, I'm in the also, university, that's why, and I have my mask on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you said I'm in the university, when you said that the the, the volume, the volume was good. The, the volume of your microphone was good. So keep that volume level. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yes, what I was trying to say is we can multiply the expression or we you can, can elevate. This is, already this is already multiplication. So how do we you... Can, we, can, uh -huh. we can elevate the, the one plus R by two, elevate it. Oh, okay. I, uh, okay. You just, um, you see, uh, I see what you mean when you say you elevate it. But uh, is there anyone else who knows uh, what to say? You, you turn the one plus R into an exponent in quotation. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you raise it to the second power, p times one plus yes, four squared. That's, that's what I was trying to say. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's p times one plus r squared. Okay. P times one plus r squared, right? Okay. So, all right. Um, all right. I'm I'm gonna give you zero point two five for that. And who who said? Keisha Anderson. Uh, Okay, you, you were the one who said, you know, you uh, raise it to exponent, right? Correct. Right, right. So Keisha, you got another, uh, you, you also got 0 0.25 for, for that. Yeah. So this is, and remember, this is already what we did or, uh, when, you know, uh, earlier, right? When we did geometric average. So this is called compounding. Right, this is compounding, and uh, we can generalize in compounding. This is how you earn interest, and if we generalize it, right, right, I mean, for any number, uh, for any number of years, for example, if we have n years, right, future value at the end of year n will be simply. P times one plus R raised to nth power, right? So if that is the case, then uh, what if um, now we know uh, P is ten K and R is ten percent. So if n is 10, that means 10 years, 10 years. So what's going to be the future value um, at year 10? What's going to be the future value? Uh, future value at the end of year 10 is going to be ten k. times 1.1, 1. 1. Uh, <laughs> it looks weird, um, okay, but 1.1 1. 1 raised to 10, okay, and this is going to come to 10,000 times 1.1 1. 1 raised to 10. It's going to come to 25,000. Uh, so it's going to come to 25.937K. Okay, so this is compounding, um, but you know, um, uh, compounding is used mainly for 
long term, long term uh, investment, long term debt. Uh, there are um, financial markets are uh, categorized as capital market and money market. Capital market means long term financial market for long term lending, right? And in long-term lending in a capital market, uh, the interest is earned through compounding, right? Interest in the uh, uh, long-term uh, loan, long-term debt uh, grows by compounding. But in money market, money market means short-term financial market uh, and short-term lending market. And short-term means on the one year, maturity is on the one year. So usually in the short term money market, uh, the maturity is only about 30 days, 60 days, you know, uh, at most, you know, no more than, you know, 90 days or 100, no more than 90 days. You know, it's actually uh, theoretically it can be possible. It's possible to lend up to 270 days or even, you know, 360 days. But uh, generally in the short term financial market, they lend it for like 30 days only 30 days, like 60 days or 90 days. Okay, not more than 60 days generally. Um, so in the short term, uh, in the money market, then is simple interest rate, right? The, the way it works is simple interest rate. So we're out of time already. So I cannot go over, I cannot talk about simple interest rate anymore. Besides you guys owe me, owed me, you know, uh, uh, 15, 15 minutes, <laughs> it's, I, I didn't get 15 minutes back, 15 minutes, I didn't get, get that back. So I will, um, uh, I will use, I will still, you know, get my 15 minutes back in the next class. Okay. All righty. So, uh, so I will see you guys this Wednesday. Okay. I'll, I'll see you this Wednesday. And, uh, uh, so class is dismissed today. Oh, one more thing. You, you, you must be all aware. You must be all aware that uh, uh, another practice uh, test is on, right? Have mm -hmm. you guys checked the announcements? Yeah. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I saw. Okay. I cannot, go, I cannot go over it uh, now because it's already, you know, uh, it will take another five minutes. So as long as you are aware, uh, that's important. Is it, Alrighty, is it graded? Guys. Is it, is huh? it, does, it, does it go? Is it a... Uh... No, no, it's a practice test. It's a practice oh. test. Okay? Alrighty. Uh, so I'm going to have to uh, uh, stop uh, sharing. The class is dismissed. Okay. Uh, Thank you, I Professor. I will have to stop recording. Yeah. Have a good day. Thank you, Professor. We'll see you, Thank you, Professor. See you Wednesday. Wednesday. All right. Take see care, Wednesday. everyone. Thank take you. Bye-bye. All right. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Professor. Sorry.